Hey there YouTube, Travis here. This is an update to an older video. Today we're going to be repacking the loose style bearings on the 1979 Pook Maxi 2. These are pretty important. I'll show you why in a second why I want to do this right now. And the original Pook service manual down there, it recommends to do it every 3600 miles. Let's take a look at these wheel bearings. So this front wheel right here, check this out. These, these are some really good wheel bearings. Why? Well, because I just repacked these, but only a few hours ago. Ignore the fact that the wheel is extremely out of true, as you can tell by the stripe on the tire. But what we're trying to pay attention to here is how well it spins and how long it spins. That's about what you want. And there's no side-to-side -side play in the wheel or anything like that. Um, I just have a very out of true front wheel. But I'll address that later. And as promised, here's the rear wheel, which is uh, still all original, and there's no chain or brake on this bike right now, so it's just the wheel. Let's give it a spin. Yeah, that's all we get. All right, so that was about the same amount of force I put in that one. This one really, whew. I would not put this bike on the road right now just because I worry about damaging those bearings in there. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here's what we're using today. The two things you probably don't have are a spanner wrench, which is just a really thin 15 millimeter wrench. You can get this at your local bicycle shop. You're going to need this because the cone nuts only have uh, two little flat sides on them, and you need this tool to be able to grab them and hold on. Also, uh, the Mopanami Wiki recommends white lithium grease. My bike shop gave me this. This stuff's been pretty good. Um, go in there and tell them that you are repacking loose style wheel bearings, and they'll be able to set you up. Also have some stuff, some uh, some stuff. Whether it's carb cleaner, brake cleaner, or engine degreaser, you're gonna need something to clean off the bearings and clean out the races. Q-tips work really well in getting down in the races and getting those cleaned out. And then a rag. This is just an old shirt I found down in my basement to get that stuff out. Um, depending on what types of axle nuts you have, you'll need either a 17 or a 19 millimeter wrench. This Mercedes Benz tool goes both ways. Okay, so since we're going to go right into doing the wheel bearings, I'm not going to talk about the other stuff on the rear wheel, uh, the chains, the brake plate, we're just going to get right into it. What I will say though is that every piece of hardware you take off here, lay it on the floor exactly as you've taken it off on each side of the wheel. That'll make putting everything back together a lot easier. Take pictures along the way if that helps you out too. Alright, awesome. The rear wheel is off the bike. So. Uh, before we start working on the bearings here, one thing that's recommended is you can take a little bit of brake cleaner and go along the inside right here, clean that out a little bit. This inside actually looks pretty good. And Okay, I guess I can't put this off any longer. So first thing we're going to do here is break the locking nut away from the cone nut here. If you remember some of you diehards from my original video, I had three guys working on this thing and it was a pain. Let's see what I can do with just me. and we have to break these free. If I had, man, like a deep socket or something, that'd be awesome. But I don't. Okay, so finally got this guy free. And so begins the process of the long spin. Now you'll notice that the cone nut still spins the whole axle, so just put your wrench on the other side. And now you get to spin this thing off the entire axle. Move the camera around here. And we're just about off, finally. Oh man, finger muscles get tired there pretty easy. Okay, look at this thing. That's all. Oof. Sorry, I'm going to get under the lens. Got some focus here. Oh, man. That, oof. All right, well, we're definitely going to clean up those nuts. And now you can pull the axle out of the other side. Oh, boy. Wow. Look at that old grease on there. Oh, man. All right, well, you can get your rag. Start cleaning this up the best you can. If you use paper towels, you're going to leave shreds all over this, so use a rag. 
Okay, so get a small container like this. I use the cap for the engine degreaser. Fill it up with your stuff. Then moving back up to the bearings, you can just use a set of needle nose pliers. Sorry, I didn't mention these earlier. And you can just go ahead and grab them, dunk them in your little stuff bath. Start getting all this old grease off of them. So I really recommend doing this on the floor like I am, not on a workbench, just because it's going to happen. You're going to drop one of these, you're not going to find it, and you're not going to be very happy. So there's all your wheel bearings in there, from one side at least. Go ahead and shake them up, get that stuff swirled around. You can start taking them out and setting them aside. Same thing with the other side, just start going in there, getting your wheel bearings out, dropping them in your container. Okay, next thing you need to do is clean out these races right here. Go ahead and spray some stiff. Both sides. So as you can imagine, this is where the Q-tips come in handy. Just go at it with the Q-tips and the shop rag. We want to get as much of that old grease out of there as we possibly can. Make sure we try and wipe up whatever penetrant we sprayed in there so it doesn't hurt the new grease. Great! Surprisingly, a lot of that old grease turned to a, like a hard crust. All right, so now we can start putting the new stuff in. So once again, make sure you get the white lithium grease that comes in a tube, not the spray stuff, not for this one. So now what you do, put the tube in there and just fill all the way around. So doesn't have to be perfect at first, and then you can kind of just get all that grease right into where it needs to be. As far as how much grease to put in there, I mean you want your wheels to spin pretty well so there's no... I mean don't go crazy overdoing it, but you want to put a decent amount of grease in there. Okay, so we've got 13 bearings on each side and there's our axle which I cleaned up a little bit. I put a little bit of grease on my finger, pick up each bearing, and I put it right inside the races by hand. So I take the bearing, get some grease on it, stick it in. This actually goes pretty quickly. Okay, and here's another tip. You can take your cone nut, which you just cleaned up, and you can just gently press it in there, give a few slow turns. That helps to seat your bearings. Okay, so before we go too in-depth and get too confusing about the axle, I'm just going to leave this hardware on the end right here, so I can stick it, put it back in the way it came out. However, if you do, for some crazy reason, take off all the hardware on this, notice right down here, let me see if I can get it in the camera, there's a little stop. It's where the threading changes right there, right there at that spot. And on the side with your brake plate, uh, the cone nut goes right up to that thing. And that's, you can use that as a guide when you put it all back together. But uh, like I said, we don't have to do that today. Okay, nice and easy. Great, now we can start putting the hardware back on the other side. Once again, we have the long, slow spin. Alright, now we're at the very end, the part where we tighten everything down. Now this part always seemed a little daunting to me when I read about it, but it ain't that bad. The instructions on the Moped Army Wiki say to hold the axle, take your spanner wrench, tighten this all the way down, then back up an eighth of a turn. Well, it says about an eighth of a turn, and that's pretty accurate because it's really something that you can't just describe. It's something you have to feel out. So check this out. You want this to spin awesome. Like if you had a friend hold up the axle by both sides and spun the wheel, it should spin like really well, right? But you also don't want any play in the axle. So when I say play, that's left, right, up, down. You don't want this moving around because that's obviously very unstable. So you have to find a happy medium between the two. And it's just a little bit of trial and error. So what I do, here's the locking nut. It's ready to go once I tighten down the cone nut. I tighten down by hand. 
and then I'll take the wrench and I'll slowly tighten it ever so slowly until it gets to that sweet spot. It's really just something you have to feel out. Now I'll be honest with you too, really this just took hand tight and there's no play in it and it spins pretty awesome. Check it out. Ignore the noise from the freewheel that just needs lubed. I mean it keeps spinning and spinning and spinning. Alright so you can go ahead take your lock nut go ahead and tighten that down all the way onto your cone nut. Same way you broke it free. Put the spanner wrench on it and then put your regular wrench on it and get it nice and locked down. So once again just double check, no play. We spin awesome. Alright, let's go ahead and slap this thing back together. Okay YouTube, let's go ahead and see how we did. Now ignoring the sound of my freewheel, which I'm going to loop up a little bit better later, that is pretty awesome. I'm really happy about this. This bike is really coming together, and I will keep you guys updated. I hope that was helpful. Wheel bearings are something people sometimes like to overlook, but uh, they're pretty important. Alright YouTube, until next time.